A man on a mission with nothing to gain, led by his heart. This is human waste. This is David Matthews Day every day. We spend the first six hours of our day going through and reporting the illegal dumping. Today, though, the community advocate started before the sun rose with a sixth homeless RV fire in 30 hours. Our fire station now has to bring water to many of the fires that they go to because they cannot access the fire hydrants because the RVs are blocking the fire hydrants. Lined along the streets for miles are more than 500 homeless RVs. This is L.A., but looks more like a third world country. A small part of the area is Harbor Gateway, unknown to most, but shares zip codes with Gardena and Torrance. The large majority of these RVs are parked in unincorporated L.A. County, bleeding into East Gardena, West Rancho Dominguez, Compton, and Willowbrook. Everything kind of overlaps itself, so this is the perfect spot to have the Wild West. Trashed out, broken down homeless RVs blocking sidewalks and lanes of traffic, infested with filth, drugs, weapons, and crime. It's crazy around here. From Broadway to 140th to Redondo Beach Boulevard, derelict boats, surfboards, and trailers, where puppies roam free, parking's free, and rules don't apply. A few individuals that charge 50 or 75 dollars to take the septic out, to take the waste out of the septic tanks in the RVs, and then they're disposing of that waste into the storm drains. Some homeless fires here are accidents, others payback, like this one captured on surveillance. The burned out RVs just become part of the roadside decor. This one on 135th burned down four months ago. It's still here. In front of it, exposed electrical wires run along the sidewalk where the homeless steal power by hardwiring their RVs into this traffic light. Across the street, the Song family, like the other 12,000 who work around here, tries to run business as usual at the L.A. Garden Center. We're trying to see if we can help them out and stuff like that, but it's just been really tough to uh, work around them. The campers have a bunch of pictures of cartoons and stuff. It's very smelly and it makes me sad that they have to live there. Just as we're leaving the garden center, right in front of our camera, this homeless man falls to the concrete and his mouth fills with blood. He hit his head on the brick wall when he tripped, running with a drink. We called 911 and tried to stop the bleeding. Firefighters and paramedics quickly arrived and took him to the ER. Around the corner in Rosewood isn't any better. A near fight over accused snitching. With no intention or desire to leave this lifestyle. It's a blessing because I want a piece of mine. That's my freedom. Jose Sanchez says his next door neighbor, who lived in this RV, still parked here, died of an overdose last month. And back in October, Hazmat responded to almost 40 barrels of wood glue seeping into the storm drain. Doreen Campos says it was an accident by her ex husband, a carpenter, now homeless. With a taser in her back pocket, she visits him often to help. I don't know what. He doesn't have anybody else. I had three kids with him. I've never seen him this bad in, you know, in his life. Matthews offers his assistance as well. A lot of the homeless out here know and trust him and even invite him inside. We've got rat infested RVs that have hundreds of rats everywhere. The 57-year-old moved here from Pasadena six years ago. With some savings as a private chef, he quit at the start of COVID to form the Harbor Gateway Chamber of Commerce. He doesn't make any money, but earns what he holds more valuable, a sense of purpose, in fulfilling the promise he made to help his new community, not only the outraged residents, but the homeless. Matthews met Fabiola Robles, who quit her accounting job in August to voluntarily help him full time. Me and my family decided to do community cleanup, so we started doing that every Saturday. And from there, I learned how complicated our jurisdictions were and how much of a need we had to help our community just with keeping it clean, simple trash pickup. The majority of RVs are being rented. So the rent, if you don't pay your rent on time, they're basically burning you out. Who are they renting from? They're renting from unknown individuals that apparently own the bulk of these RVs that are on the street. Along with about a dozen volunteers, the two advocates did a homeless count last month. The findings, staggering. 552 homeless RVs in six square miles. There's 65 kids in seven RVs in one area. And Why? 
That's the that's the million dollar question. 425 of these RVs lie within a six mile radius and 10% of them are on LA city land. The other 90% fall within unincorporated LA County, which makes solving this crisis even more challenging. Matthews only represents that one tenth of the area, but says he's trying to help everyone here and needs a lot more support. These are people who need our help, and we can't just say someone else is going to do it. There isn't someone else. It's got to start from within the community. A man of his word striving to do all in his power to help the housed and unhoused so everyone in the community can have peace and feel safe at home. In Harbor Gateway, Haley Winslow and Gino Arias, Fox 11 News. So Haley just mentioned that 90% number, and that means 90% of the homeless RVs fall in L.A. County Supervisor Holly Mitchell's district. Remember, they mm -hmm. oversee mm -hmm. unincorporated parts of L.A. County. Right. So we've been trying to reach out to Supervisor Mitchell's office for a week. She just responded and just sent us this statement. It reads in part, my team will be working with all the county teams and our community partners to prioritize housing our neighbors living in these RVs before towing and dismantling them, which is why this work is taking time.